as as the ninety two campaign was the emergence of another superpower under you know one of the most influential influential cricketers of all time in Imran Khan is doing you know great things you know celebrating democracy is an important part of 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 life and he's doing that like a champion he was in the ninety two World Cup so yeah it is important for sure thank you so much gentlemen thank you Thanks. thank you the two best sites. Um, people would argue that India should be there. Uh, people would argue that Australia, being defending champion, should be here. But the fact is that England and uh, Pakistan are here. Um, and you need that little bit of luck, as Pakistan, you know, as it turns out, has had that little bit of luck, especially the game, obviously, against the Netherlands, which really went our way uh, against South Africa. So um, that's all history. It would have been lovely to see the two subcontinental rivalries come to this stage and play, you know, an enormous game. I don't think this stadium's ever seen a spectacle of sport like the first game that we had at the start of the tournament. Of course, that would have been lovely to regenerate, but it's not. And, uh, and it's still really important that, that, that the world obviously sees two fine cricket teams play great cricket. Matthew, Matthew. Uh, yeah. Let us, uh, you, you, us get, you have given great thoughts here. Ball scored a lot of runs, entertained, and, uh, and, and, okay. That's all right. I'm sorry. sorry. Matthew, before the semi finals, you said you will see a different Baba. What did you do? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> it's what Baba did. Um, I mean, Baba, Baba in my book was uh, a, a classic case of just having a, a tournament where it wasn't quite going his way. And I think just having that. Anxiety and that 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 pressure um, of a mentoring role like myself that can just put things into perspective. Having to been there so many times, I can't believe how many times you know I had to fight my way through certain critical eras where I was going to be dropped or you know I was I wasn't the first choice or first picked. Um, so just giving some perspective, I think, was my role in it. But of course, that's all you can do. You can only just hand over to a wonderful cricketer like Bubba to get it right, and he just on the night performed, as we all know, right, Baba can, he was brilliant. Matthew, how do you define this group of cricketers? I mean, on 5th of November, uh, by, when the sun was uh, rising, Pakistan was on the verge of being eliminated from the tournament, but yeah. sunset, they were in semi-finals. How would you describe all this journey and this group of cricketers? Yeah, it's a very uh, emotional campaign, World Cup cricket. It's very, the tournament play, it's very separate to the Future Tours program play, where it meanders its way through various tournaments and, you know, we're all kind of like wondering what it means. But in, when it comes to these huge tournaments, we know what it means. It means the opportunity to lift the World Cup. It means the opportunity to set nations alight and alive again, reinvigorate a nation through its uh, national team's performance. And it's got a definitive time. You know, this tournament is one month. We knew at the start of this tournament that someone was going to win, and come Sunday, someone will win, and someone will lose as well. But the very fact that you know, that, and I think that's where the emotion comes into play, because you you understand the importance of it. Um, the highs have been really solid in this tournament for Pakistan. I think there's been some really key performances. For mine the other day it was off the field when Baba was throwing in warm up balls to Rizwan. You know, to me that's very reflective of a of a culture that's working. Not a coach throwing to a player, but a player on a player. Um, hoping that and building that commonality. I think that's a beautiful moment and a beautiful metaphor for this team that really at its heart has got raw talent mixed with the passion of a nation that loves the game. And here we are, loving the game. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great... Nine, 900 and stats. Yeah, look, the stats are amazing, aren't they, when you look, when you look at those two and their performances. Um, and, and it just speaks volumes for not their on-field relationship, but, you know, very much their off-field chemistry and relationship. Both very good leaders under their own rights. Um, both uh, men are highly geared towards nationalistic pride and uh, their commitment to Islam as well. And I think both also just, they just get 
cricket. They, they get each other. They get the game of cricket. They understand that it's, it's going to have its lulls. Um, but generally speaking, they've got each other's backs. Two's always better than one. That's why the great partnerships are recognised. That's why you'll see every player stand up with a 50 or 100 run partnership because it matters. Um, and we saw that last night, right, in the, in the, in the semi-final as well um, with Hales and Butler. It, it matters, that performance remaining unblemished, you know, right through the, that run chase. So, yeah, these are key factors for Rizzi and Bubba, and it's, it's, it's generational in cricket as well. You know, who will ever forget the Haynes and Greenwich partnership, you know, something which I was and Justin, we were always, like, chasing that partnership. Never got there, thankfully, but um, that's, that's, in our heads, was important, and I'm sure it is in Rizzi and Bubba's as well. So Matthew, uh, having played seven T20s, uh, T20 internationals between them recently, do you think that makes both the team uh, familiar to each other? Yeah, I think every international side, they've got the due diligence. There's no secret. Um, and that's why you always hear the cliche in sport that it's on the day that matters, and it's 100% right. It's on the day who... Who handles the pressure? It's on the day who's got their game preparation spot on. Um, it's on the day who can handle their emotions. Uh, it's on the day how their own individual games set up their play. It's how they start, um, and it's also how they finish. So, you know, all those cliches of sport they matter in the big games, and that's why you often see in semi-finals and finals one side capitulate. You know, beyond the point of um, recognition, almost. I mean, who would have thought last night, Team India? Um, were defeated wicketless, you know. So anything can happen, but generally you got to have your stuff together. And I think Team Pakistan's done that well over the last couple of weeks. Matthew, Harris Ralph's played a lot of cricket here for the, the Melbourne Stars. What sort of advice can he offer to some of the guys who haven't played as much cricket here at the MCG? Uh, ground dimensions are a really key factor here because they are so big, square of the wicket, and he'll know how to defend against that. I mean, when you look at uh, genuine fast bowling, we talk about their attacking options for about three seconds. <laughs> the first three or four overs, and then it goes into a defensive mindset and defensive game. Um, and so Harris has got the, that wide. He's already talking to the boys around that. So, you know, what happens in professional sport is that there's information sharing, and Harry's done a great job of that so far in this tournament. Yeah. Matt, could a, a young Matt Payton have ever thought he'd be standing at the MCB <laughs> in Pakistan Green? preparing for a World Cup final? Nah, I mean, it's, it's quite obvious that, um, you know, after playing so much cricket for, for Australia, um, and now sort of influencing the game from a broadcast sense, um, and mostly overseas as well in India through the IPL, um, and also any tournament really Australia play in India, uh, now through the screens of seven, you know, through the summer, um, you know, clearly I've kind of chosen that path of, of working within media, um, but I, I've got to say that it's it's such a fantastic uh, honour and privilege to be able to share the sport as you know it with people that um, genuinely respect and want to listen to what you have to say. And you know the way that Pakistan has, has welcomed me um, has been you know a real treat and something I'll never forget. And I'm just glad that we're at this stage and uh, you know I've been able to play my small part in that. Um, Matthew, after Babar, we have seen that you are working closely with Shaheen and Harish Rauf, especially focusing on their batting. If, if they get a chance in the match, I think they are going to hit big sixes. What advice you have given them? <laughs> they hit big sixes. Pretty simple. <laughs> if they get in at that stage, yeah, go for it, smash it. Matt, just on the weather, the, the forecast is great for the, the game and the reserve. Yeah. Dave, is, is it best? We are in Melbourne, aren't we? <laughs> is it best to just ignore it, or do you, yeah. do you need to sort of have a little bit of think about the conditions? It, look, I think you've got to have your eye on conditions. I mean, today there was a great chance of rain, and here we are. You know, it's, we had a good chance to have a look at the wicket, and the wicket looks excellent. Um, high quality. It's played a number of matches on it since the first game here, which did have a bit of swing and, and seam. So I expect. You know, that won't be so prominent in this next match after I think this is the fourth game played on it. Um, but, yeah, look, I think it's it's in the lap of the gods. And, you know, ha who knows the weather here in Melbourne is, you know, especially this time of year, it's not January and February where you can basically, you know, get your outdoor setting out and have your barbie ready to go. Um, it's variable. And, and I suppose being early season just means that we have to put up with that. 
Um, and on the day, I'm sure that Melbourne is going to open up enough to have a 10 over match. Just quickly, 30 years ago was a really significant moment yeah. in Pakistan's white ball history. Does that, does that history, does that, yeah. ma- does that, that mean does, much to you? And yeah, it does. I mean, we've had our chairman, um, um, Ramiz Raja, come out and talk to the boys this morning, and he, he was just reliving some of those stories, you know, like around the, the 92 World Cup. Um, and I think that's great because that's why you play the game. I mean, these boys will inevitably, their careers will be better blink and they'll be looking back on this tournament regardless of the result, saying that we were in a semi-final, we were in a final, um, and hopefully they can say we were in a winning final. Um, and they'll tell these stories around campfires, in their villages, uh, in media conferences like the one we are here, and, and it'll be an important chapter of Pakistan cricket.